this work entitled uh, Raw K and the Future of ISO 10534 is about the fact that in the current ISO 10534 we have a description of how to measure surface measurements of porous sample. While we can do much more with impedance tube, we can also measure uh, intrinsic quantities such as rho, the dynamic mass density, and k, the dynamic bulk modulus. So there have been changes submitted to the standard series, and I will discuss them quickly. You can have access to these slides uh, going to apmr.matelis.com slash 2020 Lyon. And uh, you can move uh, between this slide using the arrow keys uh, on the top left and top right corners. And don't forget to uh, scroll down because there's sometimes some more information on one slide. Uh, so this uh, 10534 series is about the determination of a sun absorption coefficient and impedance in impedance tubes. So for all impedance tube, uh, you will see there's always the ice speaker somewhere on the left and the porous sample somewhere on the right inside the tube. Here we can see a microphone and there here some kind of a piston. So the first part of this ISO 10534 is about the standing wave ratio. Uh, so once again we have another impedance tube where the uh, excitation panel has been removed so you can see uh, the impedance tube, which is a large one of 600 mm by 600 mm, where we can see here uh, wedges for an echoic chamber in blue, a microphone in black here, which can be moved along a rail. So here is the rail again. And the idea is to measure the standing wave ratio. So what is the standing wave ratio? Is the that uh, when you have um, incoming wave in red on the surface of a porous sample in yellow you will have reflected wave in blue and of course the wave inside the tube is the sum of the two so it's the violet one the stationary wave in violet so we can superimpose the plots of the uh, stationary wave so you have an idea of what a microphone will measure with a certain integration time so we have a maximum absolute value here and a minimum absolute value here. And of course, these values depend on the uh, sun absorption coefficient of the material. So if we have a higher sun absorption coefficient, we will have a different value for this uh, standing wave ratio, which is the ratio between this uh, absolute maximum value and uh, absolute minimum value. Okay, so of course in an impedance tube, it's working the other way around. We are measuring uh, on looking for these values inside the tube, moving the microphone inside the tube with the rail, and we get uh, access for one frequency to this uh, sun absorption coefficient uh, for normal incidence and plane waves. Of course, we get also the uh, surface uh, impedance and the uh, reflection coefficient before uh, assessing the uh, sound absorption coefficient. The second part of the ISO 10534 is the uh, what is called the transfer function method. In this case, we don't move the microphone inside the tube, but we uh, choose two fixed positions. So here we have the microphone at one fixed position, and we can move it to another one or use two microphones. And uh, we do uh, the uh, frequency response functions of these two microphones, and we have access to a normal surface impedance, normal reflection coefficient, and normal uh, sound absorption coefficient, with a description of how it works uh, here below the slide. So currently, um, this ISO series allows to assess normal surface properties, such as the surface impedance of the material sample. It means that you will need to make another measurement for a different sample thickness. The reflection coefficient, again for, again for normal incidence, for the same material sample, and you will have to redo the measurement for another thickness of the sample. And the sun absorption coefficient, again, of the material sample and for a plane wave at normal incidence. But we can do much more with an impedance tube. We can assess the bulk properties, such as the characteristic impedance, the characteristic wave number, or the dynamic mass density and the dynamic bulk modulus. Uh, 
So either you choose one set of uh, quantities, uh, which is a characteristic wave number and characteristic impedance, and you can deduce from that uh, the uh, dynamic mass density and dynamic bulk modulus. So you have to choose one set or another, and you can deduce uh, some values from one set to the other one. So why uh, dealing with rho and k? Uh, it's because Zwicker and Kosten have shown in 1949 that uh, rho characterized the viscoinertial effects. So the, the fact that at low frequencies we have a viscous flow and at higher frequencies we have an inviscid flow. While on the other side K characterized the thermal effect. So the fact that at low frequencies we have heat exchanges between the air in the pores of the material and the skeleton while at higher frequencies there's no much more heat exchange possible between the air in the pores and the skeleton. So you have two quantities which describe two different dissipation mechanisms. And of course the idea behind uh, the estimation of these two quantities is the fact that you can go to a material characterization. Here for example is the real and imaginary part of uh, dynamic mass density and on the right, the uh, real and imaginary part of a bulk modulus. Computed from a set of uh, six parameters, the parameters of the johnson champoualar lafarge uh, model. And you can see that if you change the value of uh, the left parameters, you only change the dynamic mass density. Okay, And if you change the value on the right, you only change the dynamic bulk modulus. Okay, only the value for the porosity is changing both. So the idea behind uh, assessing rho and k is material characterization. I will add some reference below this slide. So how to measure uh, rho and k from a classical impedance tube? There's uh, three techniques. The first one is to use two thicknesses. So you get a material sample of a thickness H and you do a measurement of the surface impedance, for example, for this configuration. And then you uh, get a sample thickness of twice the first thickness and you redo a measurement of the surface impedance. And then following Smith and Parrot work, you can have access to rho and k or the characteristic impedance and the uh, characteristic wave number. Another technique is using two cavities. So in this case, introduced by Utsuno, Tanaka, Fujikawa, and Sebert, you make the measurement of the surface impedance for one material sample with an air gap and a second configuration with the same material sample but with a different air gap behind it. And then you can have access to rho and k. And the third method is using three microphones or at least three microphone positions. It was introduced by Iwas and Izumi in 1986, but the, uh, the, the work is published in Japanese, so the references are just below the slide. So you can have access to a translation in English and some more refinement in the work by Iwas, Izumi and Kawabata, published in uh, the Proceedings of uh, Internoise in uh, 1988. And on this work they use a third microphone position, which is behind the material sample, like this one. And then, from the frequency response function of these three microphones, you have access to rho and k. So currently there's a proposition of a part three, which would be with three microphone positions. So exactly what I've uh, just described uh, in the slide uh, before, with a third microphone position behind the sample, which is somewhere here in the impedance tube. And uh, there uh, will be also a proposition for a fourth part, which is for four microphone positions. So uh, with two microphones in front of the porous sample, which is somewhere here in this impedance tube, and two of these three positions uh, behind the sample. The idea is to explain that we can get rho and k from this kind of impedance tube, but also uh, the transmission loss uh, as it has been explained in the ASTM E2611 uh, revised in uh, 2019. But this transmission loss for normal sound incidence is very different from the one you can get from diffusion field on larger samples. 
this is a point which is highlighted in the ASTM standard currently. Okay, so this is the uh, end of uh, this presentation, uh, and I hope uh, you have enjoyed it. And uh, I uh, just uh, want to invite you to join us uh, to the next virtual SAPM conference, which will be held between March and April uh, 2021. Thank you for your attention.